COVID Chronicles. Welcome, um, College Prep Biology. This is distance learning, live, and kind of virtual dissection with Ms. Harrington. Um, I am here in the classroom at lab station number four, which is where some of you guys would have been. Um, we have these beautiful plants in the background that I want to, for those of you that were in here, they are growing aloe plants, doing very well, so we have a nice photo shoot. Um, here are our two pigs. And I want to go over the tools that we're going to be using because that's important. Um, most important is this, the scalpel. And it is a medical grade scalpel and it um, works very well. And we, I like to use that because then you don't injure yourself using a tool that's not sharp. It actually does the job that it's designed to do. We have some sharp scissors here, um, long pair of tweezers. The pointer that we will use to point out organs and just a small pair that sometimes when you're working with partners, it helps to have a buddy help you out. So here we are with our tools. I'm going to move into the pigs at this point. I'm going to pick up my little pointer. Um, so here we have, this is a female. So we're going to start with how we know it's a female. So at the very back here, pull the tail back. This is the urogenital opening. Um, and so the female is actually, if you pull this back, this is the urogenital papillae. And it's a flap that covers the opening to the female, which would be the urogenital opening. If you look at her, you can see that that looks, get a nice shot of that. That looks very different than what we would see on our male. And our male is here. You guys can laugh at home. There's not um, a urogenital opening here. What we see is a scrotum, and these are two testicles, which we will show you when we dissect. Very different. I, did, I forgot to point out, they do both have, where they go to the bathroom, number two for their waist. How it tied, there is the anus right below the tail. Same thing on a female. Go back here to show you hers. Can we see that, Fleming? Absolutely. There's her anus. It's uh, right above her uh, urogenital opening. There we are. So continuing on with external anatomy, I'm going to move to the male here. And so a couple things that just want to go over um, on the ear, the actual ear flap, all of this exterior part is called the penna. And then the actual opening here in the, where your sound goes in and out is the external auditory meatus. The nostrils on a pig, two nostrils here, those are called nares. Mm, umbilical cord is important. So here you're gonna notice when we dissect, you're gonna see blue coloration for the circulatory system and red. Anything that you see that's in blue, that's a vein. Red will be um, dyed, or arteries will be dyed red. And so you'll see that when we go in. Mm -hmm. I think we're all good for that part. Session one, done. We're rolling. So here we go for the um, actual cuts that are going to be made here. Um, so I've marked it off for you. This is where the diaphragm is in this area. So this will be the chest or thoracic cavity. And then this is all gonna be our abdomen from here down. And then we'll, we'll cut here around the umbilical cord. So I'm gonna go ahead and start making some initial cuts. And if you notice, it's really, I, I'm, not, I'm giving it um, some, this is how it is in real life. I told you guys I saw a human autopsy. Just kind of give it a little pressure, comes through. And when you guys, if you were doing it, you would probably be, it all depends. Some of you guys are a lot more confident. And this is where you have to be careful because I, we're going to see how well I do. I don't want to push down in there because then I'll nick something. So as I start to get, um, you can start to see here, I have, I'm into the cavity. I can pull the skin up. That way it makes it a lot nicer. 
and I don't hit any organs. And you're starting to see a major organ here, and in your mind you're going, Miss Harrington, that is the, shh, don't say it, Fleming. It won't. Okay. We'll find out. You guys should know what that is. It's a surprise. It's a surprise. Again, I usually pull on the umbilical cord to keep everything up. That's good. We're going to see how I do. I do not want to nick any organs. You guys, I'm nervous. I'm going to make this look good. Um, and then here, I was very delicate in how I, I didn't press too hard on the chest. And then when I get to this point, I'll put this down. And Ms. Harrington, you're being wild here. Um, at this point, I might need my scissors. I put them back in the thing. Oh, there, oh you got it. it. Um, again... Going to cut this chest plate, and that is that is some bone there. Let's see if I did a good enough job here to get the breastplate open. I did, but guess what I did do? I just realized, and I'll show you guys that. I cut the sack around the heart. Um, there's actually a clear sack around the heart, or maybe I did. We'll see. I'll show you in a moment. That's the part's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna clean this up a little bit, you guys. But here we are when we when we look at this area. I'm gonna clean up as we move into looking at them individually. I'm gonna drain this, which is what you've done in class. It's not fun to look at juicy organs. We're looking at the diaphragm. The diaphragm is here, separating our chest cavity from what would be our abdomen. All right. Just to clarify, you're just clearing away the extra tissue inside. I'm um, behind the scenes. This is a process that can take a while. Um, and some of you that would be probably good surgeons or even better than I am. Um, and people who've actually dressed animals before, you're watching me going, Miss Harrington, I could do better. I'm sure you could. Um, but this part of getting the animal or the pig open so that we actually can view everything is takes a while. And it's really, it's really important because if the animal's closed up, it's very difficult. So you're just cutting like uh, along the, looks like the rib cage there? That's correct. Getting this peeled back. All right, perfect. Oh, I didn't have my blade the right way. There we go. Joker cut. So you're cutting uh, along the where the jaw kind of connects right there. Correct. And one of the most interesting things here that I'm going to show you is the flap at the back of the neck. It's called the epiglottis. And it keeps food from going into our lungs. And I can tell you, like, my brother, uh, his grandfather-in-law had a stroke. And he was paralyzed as epiglottis so he had to have a feeding tube mm -hmm. because it didn't work anymore and it, it the flap did not work in being able to keep food out of his lungs so okay. it's, it's back here so here I am opening the mouth so we're going to be looking at digestive here the beginning of the digestive do we see the flap Fleming we do let me clean that up this epiglottis, it's there. It's not as pronounced as I've seen. But you can kind of see it there. So what we're looking at, it's kind of cool to see the mouth. So your palate is where this allows um, your tongue room to move. And in the front, closest to the, the front of your, your mouth, you have these ridges and that signifies the hard palate. And then back here, it has more muscles, actually, and movement here, and helps with, uh, um, I'm blanking on that for a moment, but I know there's a lot more with, the, with actually the throat. So it has more function, whereas this is just there in the roof of the mouth. Um, so this has a little bit more movement due to its muscle structure. So soft palate, hard palate, 
And then the little flap to keep your food going down into your esophagus and not into your lungs is called the epiglottis. So it's that, that tiny well. flap. All right. To go ahead and show you guys the um, trachea and the esophagus, since we were talking about the beginning of digestion with food going down the mouth. Here, so this is like the Adam's apple. Here's your um, larynx voice box, which is here. And then coming right off of it, you can tell that this, and when I rub the pen across it, it's ribbed. And you can see these little white cartilage rings. Um, and even if I remove more connective tissue, you may be able to see it. But it is, oh, there we go a little bit. It has ridges in that. And that's the trachea where your air goes down into your lungs. Now, right behind it, which is why when you are eating something, you get something stuck in your throat, you cough because the esophagus is right there next to it. So if we look at the difference in these two tubes, your air is gonna go down here in the trachea, and then we have, I can put my finger between it, actually you can see the difference now. Trachea, and then the tube here is the esophagus, where it goes down into your stomach. And then I'll just hold the esophagus so you can see what that looks like. Does, is that what they mean by it went down the wrong pipe? <laughs> you hope you don't get food in your lungs oh. if epiglottis works. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. Sorry, I just thought of that just now. Excellent. I'm trying not to talk too much. Okay. All right, you guys, just like surgery, we don't need to look at the parts mm -hmm. we're not operating on or focusing on. So cover up the pig here for you. Uh oh, you saw the heart. Um, so here we are. This is a little bit better. We can see the, the diaphragm here that moves and contracts as we inhale air and then moves up as we exhale. So there's that separating muscle really keeping our abdomen from our chest. This huge organ that is just staring at you when you open the pig in the abdominal region, this is the liver. There is one more lobe on the liver um, in the pig than the human. And so it's, it's fairly large taking up this whole region. One thing that I want to kind of point out to you, and I'll just do it for fun here, is when you look at the texture of the liver, when people have liver cancer, um, because it's very a very sturdy organ, you can go in and do a slice some off if there are cancer cells there, um, and it's not hard to operate on in that way. So you can just cut some of it off because of the the texture and really how it's built with its uh, sh the structure of the liver. Now, if I pull the liver up, this is the, one of the harder organs to see. I'm gonna pull the liver up and underneath is a, this is a bile duct here, D-U-C-T, and this is the gallbladder. I'm gonna do the outline of the gallbladder here. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, uh, I know I've had an aunt that has had to have the gallbladder removed it really helps with breaking down fats. So sometimes when you people have that removed, they may have issues eating fatty foods. Um, but there is the gallbladder, and many people do live without it. This beautiful pouch right here, look at that. Very nice. Uh, I'm going to actually almost hold it in my hand. It looks like a pouch. Got that is the stomach. And that stomach is right underneath the liver there. Um, so there we are with the stomach. To the side of the stomach is your spleen. So it's like this long, slender organ here that's off to the side. Um, that has our white blood cells. Um, I think it re also recycles red blood cells. So it's a, it's a part of the immune system. So people that have issues or don't have a spleen may be more susceptible, especially I'm sure right now with COVID-19, um, they would have more issues if they don't have their spleen, spleen. But some people have an injured spleen or live without it. Hardest organ to find. I actually saved it to kind of show you guys um, how this is so hard to get to. This is the pancreas and it is very spongy. And if I play around too much in here, I will end up nicking an intestine and we will have waste. But you can, there's a lot of connective tissue. There's the tail of the pancreas down here. So when we're looking at the pancreas, it is like a sponge. Very difficult to operate on. Um, it is 
w underneath the stomach, and so it kind of starts here. Mm -hmm. There's the outline. Here's the tail of it. It's this little spongy, or and I'm pulling it back a little bit, spongy organ right here. Looks some more white in color, I would say. We're going to move on here to our intestines. Um, so smaller tube, small intestines. That's where like 90% of our food is digested <clears throat> here in the small intestines. And then here, large intestines. They appear darker in color. This is where our waste, ooh, ooh. Y'all want to see that on camera? Maybe just a little bit. Yeah. Okay. There's a little waste for you. You get that on camera, Clint? Uh, you know it. Wouldn't okay. Miss it. <clears throat> so this is where we start to. Um, at this point, we're really getting it ready for for waste, uh, water. Those things are important. Um, and then as you're as you're and also. Some things that you weren't able to digest, we have bacteria in here to try and help with that as it gets finally on its way out. If we pull up your intestines, yeah. this, there's the end of the intestines right there, you can see it. This is the rectum, and this is where your waste is gonna go out. It's gonna go all the way through here and then out the back. And so a lot of times when women are pregnant, they feel like they have to go to the bathroom. You can imagine a nine or seven to nine pound baby forcing on that. You are gonna feel like you have to poop, which is a common thing women say. I've been in a couple live births. <laughs> Here is our bladder. So kind of if you pull this back and you look at where it is on the pig, the bladder is here. It's this entire area here. And I'm going to show you in a moment. We're going to stop the video. This is um, your ureter. We have tubes. These are tubes coming from the kidneys, actually. They're bringing the urine. And then you have your urethra. We will actually urinate. But this is going to be this. all of these. These are tubes right here. They're attached to your kidneys inside of you. And I'll show you that in a moment. Let me check my list. Fleming, are we? No, I did not show mesentery. Let's go back. Mesentery. How could we forget the mesentery? It's the prettiest part. Oh my like, goodness. If you were an artist, this is the, the most attractive part of the it's insides. The, it's the flower. It, it's the, the flower. So if you look at this connective tissue, it bands your intestines together and keeps them so that literally they're not, whoa, 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 flopping all around. Um, and I can find them again here. Ooh, look, oh, man. Look at that shot. Beautiful. We got red for... Uh, arteries, pink there, and some blue for your veins, and you're looking at all this, and it's it's gonna keep it, your intestines intact. Mm -hmm. Fanta, it almost looks like coral, mm -hmm. I think. Absolutely. All right, I think we're good for that segment? Yeah. All right, we're gonna work on the um, excretory system, um, and I guess some reproductive, because we're gonna go into the testicles, but let's look at the kidneys. You probably can identify them here. You're like, I've pulled, literally, I've pulled everything up. Intestines up, we're on your back. I think that's why when people have kidney stones, it hurts. Is that right? Have you joined anybody for me that's had a kidney stone? I do not, I've no, I do not. Hurts in the back, because the kidneys are really at your back. Um, now, a kidney stone is a buildup of calcium. Mm-hmm, certain right? minerals, but I actually don't know what all of them are. Okay, I'll have to look Deposits. that up. Deposits. All right. Um, so, from this pig's point of view, this would be the pig's right kidney. Um, this would be the pig's left kidney. And then there's this, too, I was telling Fleming how big the ureter is on this one. I was like, whoa, sometimes it's hard to find. So this tube, um, to remember kidneys are filtering out all of our toxins and things as we get ready to excrete them. Um, this ureter attaches here, takes urine out, and it's gonna come in here. Look at that, it's so nice, comes in right there all the way from the kidney we can follow it here into the bladder before it comes out here we are on this side we have another ureter huge i think this pig had a nice excretory system here coming out here now this is going to make some of you cringe i just sliced the scrotum mm -hmm. and so we're going to Pull out, I'm just gonna peel this back. Oh, oh, ooh, yes, you guys are like, Miss Harrington, you're brutal. I told you guys I was gonna try my best not to be, but it's easiest to do it this way. There they are, testicles. 
Now, this, is, so you can kind of see, there's one, there's the second one. This is the epididymis, I believe, where uh, sperm would be stored. So there's different areas um, of the, the testicles where it's made and then where it's stored. And there's tubes that lead all up into uh, the male anatomy. But there they are, folks. All right. I have a question. Okay. So back to the kidneys. Um, we were talking about kidney stones. If you have a kidney stone, does it have to pass through that tube all the way through? Yes, and that's why it's it's so hard. I've heard of different, I think you can take certain medicines that will possibly break it up, even using certain lasers to try and break them up um, so that they won't be so large as they're trying to pass through here um, and out through. And the, the penis on the pig, I mean, I'm gonna tell you that sometimes it's not as developed um, on the fetal pig because they're obviously not, they're not grown. I haven't been born yet, so. Mm -hmm. All right, perfect. So when they talk about passing a kidney stone, it hurts because it's it's going from the kidney all the way through. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this small tube. Absolutely. And then through here. Yeah. Anatomy. So I opened up a, the female pig, and immediately you can see, you're probably like, oh my gosh, I see fallopian tubes. Yes, you do. Um, so if I take the bladder and I really pull back and I go in and take these tweezers, it kind of almost collapses down here into her, her uh, bladder region. And if I kind of pull them apart a little bit, it maybe looks more like what you think it would look like. Mm. So this area where a child or offspring would develop, this region here would be the uterus of the female. These cute little curly cues here, this is like fallopian tubes, they're called oviducts. And this is a gorgeous ovary here at the end. So what would become the ovary there's one right there at the end. It looks like a little bean right there. Same thing on the other side. Uh, oviducts here leading to the very end of that should be another ovary. If I can get a hold of it. Yeah, I did. And there it is. Right there. This looks kind of blending in with her. It's got connective tissue on it. There it is. There's the ovary on that one. So only thing you need to know here for the female, oviducts on each side leading to an ovary on each side. And right here, which is what you guys would kind of expect, is what you would, this area would be the uterus. And that wraps up the female reproductive system. You, the male did not have that. All right, so we're gonna start here in the chest cavity. I'm gonna go over the heart and the lungs. Um, so here's the heart. And when we look at it, we have these tiny, uh, smaller, in comparison to the rest of the heart, these flaps. Now here's one, and then I'll pull this one back right there. And so when we look at the heart, this would be the right atrium, and this is the left atrium. And then here would be the right ventricle, and then this would be the left ventricle. So the section of the heart that looks a lot more muscular, that does the pumping, these are the ventricles and the flaps up here at the top are the atria. Um, we do have veins and arteries that sometimes don't come across dyed correctly, but we do have coronary arteries and we have veins um, that go throughout the heart. Here we're only seeing a lot of blue. Um, I'm going to show you some major, a major vein here below. So here's the heart and then we have one here below. Here's the inferior vena cava. We have veins up here. Uh, superior vena cava would be one above. And we have the, the aorta here. And if we go to the back, this is the part that to me is kind of a wow factor. So it's this major blood freeway that is taking all of your blood from your heart, the aorta, all the way down and supplying that to your organs down here in your abdomen. And that's, that's pretty major. And that's here in the back of the pig that runs down. Um, and that'll wrap it up for cardiovascular here and respiratory.